Hey guys, I'm Al, and today I'll be upgrading the graphics in my Mac Pro. Now, if you're like me, your Mac Pro probably didn't come with a really good graphics card unless you opted for a really expensive one. So in my case, I have an NVIDIA GT120, which is a really old card from 2009, but it's technically a rebranded 8500 from 2007. So the things you'll need today is one of these, essentially. It's a PCI Express 6 pin power cable that you need to plug into the motherboard that goes to the graphics card. Now besides this, what you also need is your new graphics card. Now mine is an EVGA GTX 660 with 3 gigs of RAM and it's a super clocked one straight out of the box from the factory. So yeah, it should easily work. I actually got two of the little cables so that I can actually upgrade the card again later in life because you know they need two for the really powerful ones. So let's get straight into it. Now first you need to open the Mac Pro and latch on the side. Just lift it up, and out comes the side panel. Quite handy. Now, what you'll notice is there's my old graphics card, and that's the thing we're going to replace. Now, you can't just unscrew it and plug it out. There's actually a little trick. If you look closely, there's a nice little retention bracket there that actually keeps the card in place along with the screws. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to take out this little aluminium panel on the side. It's got two thumb screws, so you just screw those. One's a bit tougher than the other one. And that's the main PCI Express port bracket. Keeps both of them in place. Now they're spring loaded, so you don't have to worry about losing it. There's that. Put that to the side there. Now you can't actually just pull the card right now. We need to get that retention bracket to move back, and that's actually a really simple bit. Here we've got a fan controller. So what you do, there's a nice little white button there, you press in, and there you pull. And if you look closely, you would have seen the retention bracket move. Just do it again there, and you can see it move there. And there you can see the ports are numbered for the PCI Express slots. Now we want to put it in number one, which is a 16 times port, which is the fastest one we have. So now we just have to wiggle out the card. Hopefully it won't be too tough. Nope. There we go, and there is my really old Mac GT120, only 512 megabytes of RAM, not really that great. Put that to the side, and here is what I'll be replacing it with. Now, the graphics card is much larger than the other one. Whoops, sorry there. There we have it. You can see EVGA, the RAND logo, and the GeForce GTX 660, and it needs the power right there. Now if we put them next to each other, you can notice it's a significantly bigger card, not only with the fan and shroud, but also much thicker. It needs a lot more cooling and power, but it's also significantly faster. Now, the first thing we need to do is put in those little power cables. So there's the two little ports at the bottom there that we need to put it in, right there. And we need to put the small little PCI Express part in first. Now this could be a bit of a hassle, but we'll see how it goes. Actually that was really simple. There's the cable, right in, no problem at all. I'm not going to put in the second cable because the car doesn't need it, but I will keep it handy. Now you can actually get those cables on eBay, or you can look up Scrumpy Max, they're on eBay as well, and they have a site at that code UK, and if you fire them an email, they'll be able to get all the parts you need. So, let's put this bugger in, shall we? Shouldn't be hard at all, hopefully. Hmm. Oops, made a critical mistake. I did forget to take out one of the PCI brackets at the back. It is a dual slot card after all. Sorry about that. There we go. Just give it a nice push so it clicks all the way in. 
there we go. Now we want to put the retention bracket in and that'll keep it sturdy in place so it won't wobble about. Now at least the cable's long enough and we have to just plug that in. There we go. Move the cable out of the way a bit. If you don't want it directly over the fan, that'll be bad for it. That should be fine right there. Now we need to put this back in a little retention bracket. And it shouldn't be too tough. We'll just slide that over. And it screws in really simply. The fact that the screws are actually held in by springs make it so much easier to just get straight into place. There we go. You don't want to tighten it too much. Otherwise, you might strip the screws. And there we have it. There's that installed. And now we just put the panel back. Alright, now let's turn it on and see if it all went according to plan. Okay, so I've booted into my computer. And it's gone perfectly, really. The only problem is that because this isn't a Mac graphics card, it doesn't have an EFI boot ROM, which Mac graphics cards actually have. So you won't actually get a boot menu or boot screen. You'll get a black screen up until the operating system actually loads, which is when the driver kicks in. Now, OS X from Mountain Lion 10.8.3 actually supports NVIDIA-based graphics cards, all the way from the 5 series up until the new 7 ones. And since this is a 6 series card, the GTX 660, it boots up and runs without a problem. So if we go here to about this Mac and click more info, there you can see it, the graphics card, NVIDIA 660 with 3 gigabytes of RAM. It's got no problem seeing that whatsoever. Now another thing I did do is I did run a comparison on the Heaven benchmark at high settings at my native resolution just to show what they're like compared to the GT120. And here we have them. On the left we have the GT120 and the right the GTX 660. So as you can see, it's significantly faster, nearly 10 times overall, which is a remarkable improvement. And this is running with the stock drivers and OS X. Now NVIDIA actually do make drivers for the Mac operating system, but unfortunately, since there was recently an update to 10.8.5, the drivers aren't compatible anymore. They only go up to 0.4 which means we actually have to wait until NVIDIA actually update the drivers, but that should give you a nice bit of increase in performance. Another thing to note is this is running the OpenGL benchmark, and Mountain Lion only supports OpenGL 3.2. Mavericks coming out in the end of October supports full 4.1, which means your graphics applications might actually get faster, games might run better, and the scores might go up, because I, you know it's more efficient, it's better, and it's much faster, and that's what we want in the end. So. This is how you install a graphics card in your Mac Pro. I'm Al, and thanks for watching.